What does it look like? It's a hut. Mm-hmm. It's a hut. Who can walk to the hut mm-hmm. over a bridge made of wood. And it's surrounded by water. Beautiful place. Beautiful blue water. Mm-hmm. And the water's calm. The water's calm? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So tell me a little bit about their surroundings, where this hut is. There's other huts. Mm-hmm. All of them have this bridge of wood going to the other huts. Mm-hmm. And they all have, like, this grass top. And people are just calm. Mm-hmm. What do the people look like in this place? Brown, like native. Mm-hmm. How are they dressed? Uh, like little cloth. Mm-hmm. Not much? Not much. Mm-hmm. Now, as you're observing all of these huts and people, do you feel that you have a body there? No, I feel like I'm watching. Mm-hmm. So let's find that as the observer, what you're doing there. Where are you observing them from? At the end of the bridge. Mm-hmm. I'm watching them, and they seem calm and happy. Mm-hmm. Are you on the bridge or in the water? On the bridge. On the wood bridge. Very good. So let's find out if you can walk on the bridge. Can you walk on the bridge and get closer? Yes. All right. So see yourself walking on that bridge. Mm-hmm. And look down at your feet and see if you can see your feet there. Like men's feet. Men's feet. Mm-hmm. What color are these feet? Brown, like the natives. Mm-hmm. Are they big? Or are they small? They're big. Mm-hmm. How old do you feel you are there? Thirties. Mm-hmm. And what is it that you're wearing? A little cloth. Mm-hmm. And do you have anything in your hands? Uh, a sack. Like a satchel. Mm hmm. A satchel? Mm hmm. What do you think is in the satchel? Medicine. Medicine. Is this what you do for this place? Yes. Mm hmm. Do you feel that you're a medicine man? Yes. Okay. Tell me a little bit about yourself. I'm unsure. Mm hmm. I'm new. You're new there? Yes. Mm-hmm. I like, I've been called to do something. All right, so let's find out. What is your job there? Why did you come? Small child is sick. Mm-hmm. Tell me more. With fever. And I have herbs that I'm going to mix and he's going to drink. <clears throat> but it seems like a happy place. Mm-hmm. So take me through this and let's find out who this child is. I'm walking down the bridge and there's other bridges that interconnect. Mm-hmm. And I'm walking to the hut and I see a mother crying is she and inside or outside inside the hut mm-hmm. and the child's been bit by something mm-hmm. and he's sick and he's sweating sweating really deeply mm-hmm. is this a small child or older uh, maybe about nine. Mm-hmm. And I comfort the mother. And I start taking out the herbs and mixing them mm-hmm. with water. Mm-hmm. And I'm giving it to the child. 
and I have a claw that I place on his forehead to cool him because of his fever. Mm-hmm. Is this claw full of the herbs too? No, it's just a damp claw. Okay. And he's vomiting. Child is really sick. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I came in time. Is he supposed to vomit? No. Mm. So he just threw up all of your herbs? Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's going to make it. How does that make you feel? Horrible. So let's find out what happens next. He dies. And they have him raised raised off the ground. Mm-hmm. Like like a raised bed. Mm-hmm. But it's made of wood. And the burn they're burning. They're burning the body. Mm-hmm. He's dead. The mother's crying. And his father is sad. Like he feels it's his fault. Like he should have been watching him. Mm-hmm. And that it was an accident while they were fishing. Mm-hmm. What bit him, do you know? Some snake. Mm-hmm. A snake in the water bit him. Mm-hmm. And the boy died and they burned his body. How are you feeling about all of this? sad because I wasn't there in time. Mm -hmm. Do you fault yourself for that? No. It was too much. There's nothing that I could have done. Mm -hmm. Too much time had passed. Mm -hmm. Anything else interesting in this scene? Important? No. All right, so let's close that scene and let's move on to another scene from the same lifetime when something important is happening to impact your life. Open up the scene and be there now. What do you see? A hut. Mm-hmm. I'm inside a hut. What is I, inside of this hut? Poles. Uh, some cloth, some clothing. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm a female. Mm-hmm. I feel... Like I'm supposed to be working, but I'm distracted over something. Mm-hmm. Let's find out why. Marriage. Mm. But I don't want to get married. Those clothes are... I'm supposed to wear them for my marriage. Mm-hmm. How old are you? Seventeen. Mm-hmm. He's older. At least twenty years older. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about him? I don't know him. I feel like I won't have my own life. Mm-hmm. I want my own life. I'm afraid. 
What do you look like in this place? Long black hair. Young. Mm -hmm. Like it's a ceremony that's going, getting ready to start. Mm -hmm. My mother comes in, scolding me f for being behind, not not ready, mm -hmm. and she's rushing me while helping me, re reassuring me that it's a good marriage, but I don't want to leave her. Mm -hmm. Take a look at your mother's eyes. The eyes are always the window to your soul. And look in her eyes and see if you recognize her as someone in your life now. My mom? Mm hmm So let's see what happens next. I'm surrounded by people. And I'm standing next to the husband, mm -hmm. the the man I'm going to marry. Mm -hmm. And there's people singing and dancing around us in a big circle. Mm -hmm. And he's smiling at me. He seems nice. But I keep thinking he's so old. Mm -hmm. And he's squeezing my hand. He's tall. What does he look like? Tall and thin. Aged a little in the face. Mm -hmm. But still has dark hair. What is he wearing? A uh, full garment. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks tan in color. Mm -hmm. What's it made out of? Hide. Some kind of hide. Mm -hmm. My dress is more flowy. With uh, tassels. Mm -hmm. Something like a tassel? Yes. On on a dress. It's very colorful. Is it made out of hide too? Yes. Mm -hmm. Are you wearing anything in your hair? My hair is pulled back. Mm -hmm. It has flowers in it. It's pulled back in a long braid. Mm -hmm. Is your heart is your hair straight? Or is it curly, or how is your hair naturally? Straight. Mm -hmm. His is straight, but not as long. Okay. I just remember thinking he's really tall. Uh huh. <laughs> and tall and thin? Tall and thin, but mm -hmm. very tall. Mm -hmm. Taller than the rest of the men in the village. Do you think that perhaps he comes from a different village where the men are taller? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, really tall. At least six, eight. Mm -hmm. Just tall. And I'm an average size. Good. So let's find out what happens next. I'd like for you to close that scene and let's move to another significant scene in that lifetime. That's impacting your life. Given birth. Two babies. Mm -hmm. Two babies. Two babies at the same time? Yes. Mm hmm. Where are you? In the hut. He's not there. There's women. 
and I'm struggling. Mm -hmm. I'm sweating. Like there are complications. Mm -hmm. What happens? The babies are fine, but I'm not. What's happening to you? I'm dying from loss of blood. Mm -hmm. And I get really cold. So take your last breath and transition out of that body. And you can now see that life from the other side of it. And tell me what's happening as you leave that body. They bring in, they brought the babies out. Mm -hmm. <coughs> out to the village? To my husband. Mm -hmm. And he's happy. Then he asks if he can go inside. And they say something. And his face drops. And then he doesn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. He's holding the babies. He just looks like he's in shock. Mm -hmm. his, his mother is there. She's older. She's shorter. Like my height would have been. Mm -hmm. she, she takes the babies. And he goes inside. And he's touching me lightly, looking over me. Crying. What are you feeling and thinking as you're watching this scene of your husband touching your dead body. I feel upset that I left him to raise the babies by himself. Mm -hmm. That he's dealt with tragedy before. Mm -hmm. Like he lost another wife. Like something had happened to her. Mm -hmm. I wasn't his first wife. He seems aged to be aging. Mm -hmm. And very stressed. He doesn't know what to do. Do you do anything from that your side? I'm standing next to him with one hand on the back of his left arm looking down at myself I'm dead How do you feel? Guilty mm -hmm. Do you think that this could have been avoided? Or did you choose to leave? I couldn't help it. Mm -hmm. I couldn't stop. I couldn't stop bleeding. So what do you do now that you feel so guilty? Where do you go? like I'm in the air mm -hmm. flying mm -hmm. like like a bird mm -hmm. but fast fast the wings are fast like like a hummingbird mm -hmm. 
and I'm getting nectar from flowers mm -hmm. and I'm happy I'm just getting the sweet nectar mm -hmm. like honey and I'm just flying all over Do you go near to where your family used to be? Or are you in a different life altogether? I don't feel that I'm over my old family. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm just free. Mm -hmm. Carefree? Carefree. Mm -hmm. No responsibility, just flying and indulging in nectar mm -hmm. I'm not big I'm small I feel like I exert a lot of energy but I'm, I'm taking in so much energy mm -hmm. from the flowers yes what color are your wings blue <clears throat> do you feel that you're male or female there male mm -hmm. so let's find out what happens in this lifetime we're just flying but then I feel like I get caught in a net mm -hmm. and I'm struggling and I keep struggling until I can't anymore because I'm weak mm -hmm. and I haven't ate and then a little boy comes along about eight mm -hmm. and he gets me out but he takes me home I feel like he's caught me mm -hmm. And he takes me home and he's speaking to his father and his father's telling him that he has to let me go that I'm not the kind of bird to keep in the house mm -hmm. but he doesn't want to let me go he takes me up in his room and he keeps me there Till I eventually die. Cause I'm sad. Mm -hmm. You lost I'm your freedom. Not carefree. Mm -hmm. So as you leave that little body of this honeymoon hummingbird, where do you go next? I feel like a bear. Mm -hmm. I feel strong. I feel powerful. Like a mother bear mm -hmm. with cubs. Yes. I feel protective of my babies. We're in a stream. And I'm catching fish. And I'm giving it to the babies. Mm -hmm. The babies are playful. Mm -hmm. How many do you have? Two. Mm -hmm. It's mischievous. They're playing with each other. Mm -hmm. Rough housing. As I catch food, I feel happy. How do you communicate with your cubs? I see myself nuzzling. Mm -hmm. I see myself roaring when they're in danger. Mm -hmm. When they're roughhousing and not paying attention. Mm -hmm. 
Do they listen to you? Not really. They... For a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then they go back to playing. But I feel happy. And then... Then they grow up. And they leave me. How does that feel? It makes me feel sad. I feel lonely. What do you do now? I roam. Roam about. Alone, wishing I had my babies. There's hunters though. So I have to be careful. I feel like I get stuck. What happens? In a, in a trap on my foot. Mm hmm What happens to your foot? I feel like I struggle, but I can't get it out. It, it hurts. It's I'm trying, and a hunter comes. He shoots me. Where does he shoot you? In the head. What do you think about while this is happening? Calm as he shoots me. I know I'm dying. And I'm calm. Mm -hmm. I accept it. But at the same time, I do feel lonely. Mm -hmm. Then I think about my babies. And I hope they don't get in a trap. And that I'm dead. So leave that scene and let's find out where you go after that. I'm seeing a solid tree. Mm -hmm. Real big trunk. Okay. Tell me about that trunk. It's so big. It's roots. Close to water. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. It's old mm -hmm. and strong and tall, and it's thriving. Being so close to water. I feel secure, mm -hmm. confident, strong. Knowing that you have everything you need there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's how one thrives, by knowing how to use your environment. What does that tree tell you? It's happy. Mm -hmm. It's happy where it's at. That it's nurtured mm -hmm. by the river. Yes. That it has everything it needs. So what message does that tree have for you today? To extend to help. I see squirrels, I see birds all in the tree. Mm -hmm. They're utilizing the tree and the tree's happy mm -hmm. to be used in that way. Yes. 
and it's saying to me to work on my foundation and I can grow up to be strong mm -hmm. and confident like it and I can help others I can be used in the right way mm -hmm. And sometimes when a storm comes by and it rattles the tree, perhaps strong winds or rains or floods, it seems to rattle the foundations of the trees. But the trees, in order for them to grow even stronger, they bring their roots even deeper into the ground, extend them out even further, knowing that even times of trouble when we are rattled and shaken, it's just to remind us that we need to ground ourselves even more. Hmm. I like the tree. Mm -hmm. I want a life like the tree. So we can make our life exactly like it needs to be, simply by choosing. Do you need to be your history anymore. No. Mm -hmm. So when you look back at your life as a young woman, are you still wearing the same hair as that woman? No. No. Are you still wearing the same skin as that woman? No. It's been replaced many times, hasn't it? Yeah. You can imagine your nails, how many times you've changed those nails. Mm -hmm. So do you, are you the same woman that went through that experience? I feel like I am, but stronger. Mm -hmm. Every time you lose hair, nails, cells, you're fortifying yourself stronger and stronger to where you're not even recognizable anymore. Just like as if someone saw a tree and five years later they came to the same spot. They wouldn't recognize the tree, would they? No. The same with you. You are no longer that young sapling <coughs> who, was, who was perhaps used by someone who wanted to carve their name into it wanted to just use you to give themselves another mark on that tree. You have grown, expanded, and although you may have some scars of that mark, you're too strong. It doesn't matter. It's not even recognizable anymore, is it? No. No. You're just a strong tree. So let's begin today to start digging our roots deep into Mother Earth using that wonderful grounding energy that she has so loving and nurturing, spreading them out along the ground, expanding our horizons, knowing that even if a tree looks like it's not moving, underneath everything is changing. Each year the rings get wider and wider as you grow wiser and wiser in experience. Each year the leaves drop, making it seem as if you're no longer coming back to life. But you come back greener, bigger and stronger. Be that tree. Be confident and tall and proud. You've earned all of those rings. And now as you enjoy that beautiful sensation of being that tree, let's take a deep breath in and let me speak with your higher self. Do I have permission <clears throat> to speak with the higher self? Yes. Thank you. I know you could have shown Kimberly many different lifetimes today. And she went from one to another to another, giving her different experiences. 
Why did she first see the one as, as the medicine man? Why did you show her that one? She's supposed to help people. Mm -hmm. Does she have a gift? Yes. Mm -hmm. Tell her about that gift. Empathy. Mm -hmm. She has strong empathy for others and their well-being. Mm -hmm. That she can feel their pain. So has she chosen the perfect job for herself? Yes. Mm -hmm. And the next one you showed her was a totally different one. It was one where she had, had an arranged marriage and she died at, at childbirth. What were you telling her in that story? That she sometimes has to do things she doesn't want to. Mm-hmm for the betterment of others. Is she still doing that today? Yes. Mm -hmm. But she died in that one. What was the reason why you showed her how she quickly ended in that life? She had fulfilled her purpose. Okay, good. Then after that, she was a hummingbird carefree, loving life. Tell her about that one. She gave up on herself mm. when she wasn't carefree anymore. Is she giving up on herself now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Tell her how. Not caring for herself. She's unbalanced. It's, a, it's an imbalance. She cares for others, but doesn't care for herself. Mm -hmm. She has weight gain, stress, for putting others before her and never taking time for herself. She's the last thought. So what is that doing to her body? It's killing her. Just like that bird? Yes. Mm -hmm. How can she reverse this? because we know that each cell can regenerate itself, can become healthy. Utilize the people in her life and ask for help. She's so concerned with helping others, but ashamed to ask for help herself. Mm -hmm. She feels that she has to be everything for everybody. But she leaves nothing for herself. Mm -hmm. So she needs to start delegating? Yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> What's the area of her life in which she needs the most help? Her children mm -hmm. and finances. Well, she says she spends a lot. Why does she spend so much if she has issues with finances? Compensation. Mm -hmm. She feels horrible that her children don't have a two parent household like she had. Mm -hmm. She wants to be everything to everybody and gives all the time. Mm -hmm. But she's not much of a taker. But what children need is presence not presence. Yes. Mm -hmm. They have too many things. Mm -hmm. So is she actually hurting them by giving them too much? Yes. Mm -hmm. How can we change that? Stop spending so much. Stop feeding the desire to be the best. Stop being the cool mom. Start hugging the kids. Start kissing the kids. Start going outside with the kids. Reading to the kids. Just spending quality time with them. Less TV. 
don't be so occupied with having a clean house mm -hmm. and, and living up to the appearances. By doing this, will this help all of her ailments that she's dealing with? Yes, she's driving herself crazy with these unrealistic demands. You can't buy everything. You can't have a clean house all the time. You can't be so rigid and structured in life. It's unrealistic. Now this rigidity that you talk about, is that affecting her body, her joints? Yes. Mm -hmm. The stress is causing her to be sick. If she wasn't stressed, she, wasn't, she wouldn't be sick. Mm -hmm. So what caused the lupus, for example? Stress mm -hmm. of working two jobs and mm -hmm. school, trying to please her mother and getting degrees and working, putting herself through college and living on her own. It was just too much. So what about now? She's not going through school now. It brought it out. Sometimes it's dormant. Mm -hmm. But when she gets stressed again, she brings it out again. Mm -hmm. It will go dormant if she stops stressing herself out. So it rears its lovely little head to remind her. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it is actually helping her to remind her? Yes. Mm -hmm. So does she need to make friends with this, this lupus? Yes. Mm -hmm. How should she address it to be respectful and grateful for it? Power. It's power, mm -hmm. it has the power to drain her. It has the power to allow her to express herself and live her life. Mm -hmm. It can be stifling or it can be good. It can be good that she respects the lupus as long as she respects her body. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lupus will respect her. Very good. What about the fibromyalgia? It's the same. Mm -hmm. All of it's the same. So what is the discomfort caused by the fibromyalgia? What is that telling her? That she's not dealing with stress That she's just allowing it to build up. Mm. Without venting it? Without allowing it to relieve itself? Without asking for help. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. She just needs help. She can't do it all. And that's okay. It's okay not to be able to do it all. All she has to do is admit it. Mm. Good. What about the rheumatoid arthritis? So much at work. Mm -hmm. All the writing. All the responsibility. She has too much responsibility. Her hands will cramp up. She needs to stop. She needs she needs to speak to someone to redelegate work. Okay. So it's the same theme. She needs the help. Yes. Mm -hmm. But she's not asking for it. Yes. Is this kind of like pride there that she is too proud to ask? 
Yes. Mm -hmm. But it's killing her. Yes. Mm. What can you tell her about the degenerative disc disease that she has? She's carrying too much mm -hmm. in her mind. She's carrying too much responsibility. She needs help. Mm -hmm. She needs to speak up, say she needs help, and to let go of her past hurts. Mm -hmm. And that'll alleviate the weight. Very good. Do we need to do some forgiveness work here? So we can relieve some of this. Yes. All right. Would you allow me to do that now and get back to you? Yes. All right. Thank you very much. So I'm going to put my hand on your chest and I want for you to start going through your entire body, your entire being, and let's relieve all of this guilt, all of this shame, all of this not feeling good enough, not maybe being able to speak out, feeling that you are a victim and we're not able to control circumstances in your life. Let's pull that out. We don't need that anymore. This is old history. This is almost like when you have a very bad stomach ache and you have a very bad bowel movement and it stinks up real bad and you don't flush it. And I want you to go ahead and let's pull all of that nasty stuff out. We're going to be flushing it away. Pull it all out. And tell me when I have it. Pull it all out, all that stinky stuff inside, all that toxic shame, guilt, remorse. These are things that just make you sick. Tell me when I have it all. It's gone. All right, we take that and send it to the universe, send it to God for healing. And now that you have that really big space in your in your whole body and your soul, what would you like to fill that space with? Wow. Let's take a fire hose and start opening it up and feel that love coming in. Every single bit of your body being filled with love. Love and light. And as we pour that in, you'll feel the confidence building in yourself knowing that you can ask for help anytime, loving yourself and loving others. <clears throat> and let's, I'm going to tap your forehead and we're going to seal that in, not to let any of that go. There you go. And now that you have pulled all that out, can you forgive yourself for doing this to yourself? Yes. For spending all of these years beating up on yourself for something that was out of your control. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because when you are blaming yourself for something that somebody did, it's like just drinking poison, thinking that that poison is going to kill them. Would you stop drinking that poison now? Yes. All right, so let's pour that down the drain and let's flush that too. We don't need any poison anymore. So let me speak with the higher self now. <clears throat> yes. Why is it that Kim hoards everything? She's afraid of abandonment. Mm hmm She feels alone. Mm-hmm. She has people around her that need her <clears throat> and need her to be many things for them. Mm-hmm. But she doesn't ask of them, mm -hmm. so she clings to things for love. Mm. Well, it seems like we have a big case of constipation there. Yes. She accepts and she accepts and she accepts, but she doesn't ever move that around. 
She accepts all of this responsibility, but she never delegates it back out. She doesn't allow that flow back and forth. And as she's hoarding these things, she's hoarding her energy. And it's no... <clears throat> it's It just seems that that's the reason why she's feeling unhappy. There's no energy flow there, is there? No. Mm -hmm. So would you give her a picture in her mind of what it would be like to release all of this material stuff and allow that energy to flow? What would it feel like to have a house that doesn't have all this stuff? Bright. Mm hmm Really bright. Mm hmm Like her soul? Yes. Mm hmm So bright. It's like sunlight. Mm-hmm. On a sunny day. Very good. So, <clears throat> I'd like to ask on her behalf for a guide that will help her with this issue with cleaning out her home, getting rid of things that she no longer needs, <clears throat> making decisions, perhaps even selling these things to make extra money. Maybe she can use these things to help other people in need, or she can feel like she's giving back. Can I ask for that guide? Yes. Thank you very much. She says that she had an experience when she was younger when something held her down and it was very real. What was this energy that held her down? A demon. Mm. And what was he trying to tell her? That he would take her. Mm -hmm. And did he? No. No. Who was guiding her during that time? grandmother mm -hmm. and that demon kind of ran away didn't he yes yes so let's thank grandmother for helping thank you mm -hmm. does she have anything to say to Kim today be strong mm -hmm. be confident in love Very good. Thank you so much. She tells me that she has a lot of sadness and that they've told her that she has bipolar. Yes. What's going on with that? Is she having a confusion there? She or is not. She gets depressed sometimes. Mm-hmm. So can we find out if there's perhaps some sort of influence there that's making her sad? Would you scan her body and see if there's any any shadows there that need to be addressed today? Her heart. Her heart. Okay. Is there a shadow around her heart? Yes. Would you allow me to connect with it? Yes. All right, so I'm going to put my hand here and move that energy up, 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 up. Good afternoon. Hello. Are you male or female energy? Male. Male. What may I call you? Mister. Mister. So, Mister, how long have you been there with Kim? Since she was six. Since she was six. What was going on at six, Mister, that allowed you to connect with her heart? She didn't feel loved. Mm. How old are you, mister? 130. Mm, that's old, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. And what year is it for you, mister? 2919. 2919. So you came from the future? Yes. Mm -hmm. And what were you doing there with her? Keeping her company. Mm, I see. And why did you select her to keep her company? Her meekness. Mm -hmm. She so agreeable. Mm -hmm. And so, mister, what brings you to this day and age? Why are you here? I don't have a body. Mm -hmm. 
What happened to your body? We don't have bodies in the future. Ah, I see. So why are you coming here to play with her? This is not your body. But she's agreeable. Hmm. Well, you see, mister, this planet at this time has a free will. And all souls need to respect that. And it seems to me that you're violating her free will by attaching to her body. Do you realize that? Yes. Mm-hmm. And if she is not in agreement with having you there, we need you to go back to the, to the light, back to source. Let's find out. I'm going to count from one to three and tap your forehead and Kim, tell me how you feel about Mr. Attaching to your heart. I'm angry. Mm -hmm. So do you feel that Mr. should be there? No. All right. So we can't send him off with anger. We need to send him off with love because he is looking for what you are. You're yeah. looking for love too, but this is not his body, is it? No. So, would you like to send him off with love? Yes. All right, let me speak with him. I'm going to tap your forehead now. Mister? Yes. Do you see that she's not in agreement with having you in her heart? Yes. You're looking for love too, aren't you? Yes. Mm -hmm. But mister, you have this love inside of you. Did you know that? No. Mm -hmm. Look inside and there's a spark of light there. Look for that spark of light. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is the light that created you. This is the light from the Creator. I want you to expand that light and tell me how it feels to make this light bigger. Warm. Mm -hmm. So as you expand that light, have it take over your entire essence. And tell me how you feel. Can you feel the love, mister? Yes. Mm -hmm. This is the love of the Creator. This is what home feels like. Are you ready to go home? Yes. All right, so go ahead and start pulling from her heart all of your connection. Pull it all out. And I'm going to ask my team of angels to surround you. And let's have them escort you directly to the light, mister. And tell me when you have pulled out all of your energy from her heart. <clears throat> I have. Mm -hmm. Now, mister, before you go, would you tell me what have you caused her all this time? Pain. Mm -hmm. What kind of pain? Feeling she couldn't be loved. Mm -hmm. Is that because you were there? Yes. Mm -hmm. What else have she felt? Rejection. Mm hmm. What else? She hasn't allowed herself to get close to anyone. Mm -hmm. Was that because you weren't allowing it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Did you have missed her anything to do with the relationships that she's had? Yes. Mm -hmm. What about the incident when she was 18? Yes. Mm -hmm. So you were responsible for all that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Did you know this woman from a different lifetime? No. Mm, okay. Would you like her to forgive you for all of this that you've caused her? Yes. All right, so let's, let me talk with her. Kim, do you forgive Mr. for doing this to you? Because if you don't forgive, you will remain in the state of anger. Can you forgive him and stop the pain? Yes. All right, very good. Let me speak with Mr. again. Mister, she's forgiven you. Can you forgive yourself for not knowing any better, for traveling to this time and space, looking for a body? Yes. Instead of going home. Very good. So, mister, I'm going to have my angels surround you now and take you straight to source, straight back to the Creator, and tell me when you get there.
Well, I'm here. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody there to greet you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who's there? Grandma. Mm -hmm. Very good. <clears throat> Mr. May the light of the universe always accompany you. Thank you very much. And now I'd like to ask the higher self to scan the body and see if there's any other shadows, any others that need help today. No. No. Very good. So while we're talking, I'd like for you to tell me why is, is it that she has this photosensitivity? Where is this coming from? Stress. Mm -hmm. So basically it all ends up being the same thing. Yes. The stress. Just built up stress. All right. So we can we you begin alleviating that stress today, pulling it out of her body. Yes. Thank you. And can you tell her what you're using to pull it out? Air. Very good. Very good. And tell me when you're done. Done. Good. Thank you very much. Why is it that she keeps picking the wrong man? Mister. Mister. So Mister has caused quite a bit of a problem with her. Yes. Including these different personalities. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. So what would you imagine that Kim's life will look now that Mr. is gone? <coughs> Growth mm -hmm. with relationships. Wonderful. Good. Anything else? The growth will help her mm -hmm. learn to love and give love. Wonderful. To accept it. Mm-hmm. And can you tell Kim what are the reasons that her son, her sons came to be with her? What are they there to teach her? Show her how to love. Mm -hmm. Is it working? Yes. Very good. Is there anything that I didn't ask that I could have asked today? No. Mm -hmm. Good. So can I ask on her behalf for a guide to help her with the losing of her weight now that she doesn't have to hold on to this any longer? Yes. Mm -hmm. Someone who is a motivational trainer, a nutrition expert, to guide her to the right foods, to the right amounts, so she will be able to listen to that guidance to tell her when it's enough, when she's eaten enough, and the right foods to eat when it's time to go out and play with the boys and do exercise with them perhaps walking running jumping can yes. I ask for that good thank you so much so I'd like for you to do one more scan of her body and I'd like for you to begin healing any of the chakras that are out of balance Go through her aura and seal her aura so that she no longer is bothered by these hitchhikers. And I'd like to ask that while Kim sleeps at night, that you will continue to work with her, helping her alleviate all of these illnesses by continuing to pull out that stress from her, reminding her of that mama bear who is so calm, so loving, so at peace, reminding her of that tree who stands tall and with confidence. I'd like to ask this, the higher self if there is anything else that you would like to tell Kim today. What's your final message to her? Be strong mm -hmm. and love and allow myself to be loved. 
Very good. And how can Kim connect with you even better? In her prayers. Mm -hmm. Ask for me. Wonderful. To be there. Good. And who else helps Kim? God. Mm -hmm. Very good. Is, so, is there anything else? Are we complete today? We are complete. Thank you very much. Five wide awake now. Wide awake, feeling wonderful. All over. That was good. What do you remember? Hummingbird. Mm-hmm. My grandmother. Mm-hmm. Mister. That's it? You don't remember much? These are just... I remember wood mm -hmm. and walking on wood. <laughs> uh -huh. That's it. <laughs> and I feel loved. Mm -hmm. You did really well. How do you feel? Tired, but, <laughs> but good. They did a lot of work on you. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, this is almost like a spiritual surgery they're doing on you. You did great. How long do you feel that you were on this journey? I mean, it doesn't feel like it's been that long. Well, what do you, what do you think? Maybe 20 minutes? Mm hmm An hour and 20-something uh, minutes. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. An hour and 30 minutes right now. <clears throat> so you wow. did really well. You are out, huh? So this is something that since you don't remember, <laughs> um, I mean, it's it was an amazing, amazing past lives. You had many different past lives. You know, I always ask people if they want to share this. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll talk about some, some parts that, that you may or may not want to share, but okay. it, was, it was great. It was great. And you feel good. Yeah. yeah. So here we are. Mm. We're in the Cincinnati, Ohio area, actually in Kentucky right now. So, Kim, how was this experience for you? I feel lighter. I don't, I don't know. I feel lighter. You feel lighter. Happier. Uh -huh. Lighter. I feel loved. Mm -hmm. You can't really understand why. But. Right. So, do you remember any of, of the session? I remember my grandmother. Mm -hmm. I remember what's coming to my mind now is Mr. Yeah. I remember Wood. Like walking on wood? Yes. Uh-huh. You were a medicine man. Okay. And that's how it started. You were uh, a man who came to help save this boy who had been bitten by a snake in the water, and you weren't able to save him, and he died. Um, you were a woman who had an arranged marriage, and she had twins, and died in childbirth. Okay. You were a hummingbird who was got caught in a net and the boy saved you but then kept you in the room and then you died of sadness. Wow. And then you were a mama bear with two little cubs and you were really excited about the bear, the, the little babies. But as they grew up you got lonely because they, they went off on their own but then you got caught by a trap and got shot by a, by a hunter. Many lives. Many lives. Not all human. Not all human. And uh, there was even one with a tree, where you were a very tall tree. So, there were a lot of experiences here, but you don't remember all of them. No. No, you don't remember any of them. No. So this is what we call, like, the synambulistic state, where you pretty much don't remember anything. But you feel you feel it when you wake up. Yeah. I feel so this good. is this is why we do the recordings because obviously Kim has just awakened from this. She wasn't asleep, as you can see, but the recordings you need to listen to the recordings because all of the therapy is in there. As you listen to them, it comes back and you get that, that therapy again. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. So how does it feel to be in hypnosis? It didn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I was scared. I didn't know what to expect, yes. but I feel great. What made you kind of like just let go? 
I think I've been hurt for a long time. Mm -hmm. You were ready for it? I needed it. it. Yeah. So, and I do discuss at length before we start this what hypnosis is and his isn't. So, uh, this, I think it helped ease your mind that you didn't need to be in control. Right. Because she's a control freak. I am. (laughs) (laughs) And this is a lot about what your higher self said is you need to ask for help. That's the whole thing. So if you would like a session with me, you can go to my website, albawyman.com. Um, very easy to sign up. Yeah, yeah. And I also travel. Like I said, we're right now uh, right near the Cincinnati, Ohio airport. And you can just sign up for my newsletter. And if I'm near a city, uh, city near you, you can uh, sign up. And hopefully I'll get to see you soon. Okay. Until the next time, thank you for watching. Bye. Give me a hug now. Oh, you deserve it.